This video is going to start a chapter that goes a completely different direction than the sequences and series that we've been focusing on up to this point. We're going to start by looking at these things called conic sections, answering the question, what are conic sections? And we're going to just barely touch the surface of what a conic section is. Each one of these different conic sections we could probably spend a whole day or more on. And instead, we're going to do them all in one day. So we're just going to hit the highlights. There are several conic sections. The first one is the circle. And we actually have a very precise definition for the circle. It is all points that are equidistant. from a point. So if I have a point here in the center, and I have some set distance, we'll call that distance r, no matter where that set distance goes, that distance is going to be the same. And if we collect all of the points that are exactly a distance of r away from that point, we should get a perfect circle with radius r. The equation that builds a circle like this is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the point h comma k is the center of the circle, and r is equal to the radius of the circle. So if I wanted to find the equation of a circle centered at 5 comma negative 2 with radius 3, we could build that knowing that the center is h comma k. And the radius is that radius of 3. So my equation becomes, open a parenthesis, x minus h, which is the x coordinate of the center, 5, squared plus y minus k, which is the y coordinate of the center. Subtracting a negative 2 is the same as adding 2, squared equals the radius squared. The radius is 3. 3 squared is 9. And this gives us the equation of the circle centered at 5, negative 2 with a radius of 3. Now, a circle is the most basic of the conic sections. And we don't actually spend much time on it because of how basic it is. So let's go to the next most interesting conic section. And that is the parabola. A parabola has a very specific definition also that has to do with distance as well. A parabola is all the points with a distance from a point, and we call this other point the focus. equal to the distance from a line. And that line we call the directrix. So what this means is we've got this parabola. There is a focus inside the parabola. And there is a directrix outside of the parabola. And the idea of a parabola is if I take the distance from the focus to the line, let's call that a, it's going to be the same as from the parabola to the directrix. That distance is going to be the same. Now, 
it's going to be a different distance if I go maybe more diagonal and slightly to the right. We'll call that b. But then we'll get the same distance as you drop down to the directrix, b. So wherever this line is drawn, c, that length is the same as the length to the directrix, c. Those lengths are always the same. Now, this drawing's not to scale and not a perfect parabola, so it, those don't look quite the same. But if it were a perfect parabola, those distances from the focus to the graph would be the same as the distance from the graph to the directrix. For the equation of the parabola, it is based on the direction of the parabola. The most common type of parabola that we are familiar with is the parabola that opens upwards. The parabola that opens upward has a vertex. We'll call that vertex at the point h comma k. And then up above the vertex is the focus. And then below it is the line that is the directrix. The equation of a parabola like this is y equals 1 over 4p times x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k is that vertex point. Also, it's important to note that this letter p, p is the distance to either the directrix or focus depending on which direction we're going, from the vertex. And we already said the vertex, h comma k, is the vertex coordinates. And the equation y equals since we drop from the vertex down to the directrix, we can take that k coordinate of the vertex and subtract the p to get the directrix. Also of note, just a little side note, if the parabola is upside down, the only difference is we make the whole thing negative. So we would have y equals negative 1 over 4p times x minus h squared plus k. Exactly the same, but the negative in front would make the parabola go the other direction. So that's the first direction of a parabola. The second direction we have a parabola actually goes the other direction. It goes opening to the right with a vertex still at our point, h comma k. But now the focus is off to the right, and the directrix is vertical. This equation is x equals 1 over 4p times y minus k squared plus h. And p on here is still the distance to either the directrix or the focus from the vertex. So again, that distance between them is p, just like it was before. And h comma k is still the center. Notice the k is always with the y, so it's y minus k here. But that is the vertex. And the directrix equation, then, is an x equals equation. It's x equals h minus that p, that distance from the vertex to the directrix.
And again, we have a little side note that if the parabola opens off to the right, that just means we have a negative in front of everything. So it's x equals negative 1 over 4p times x minus k, or I'm sorry, y minus k squared plus h. So with the parabola, the equation is based on the direction. So with this in mind, let's see if we can find some equations of parabola. First, let's say we want a parabola that has a focus at 3, 2 and directrix at y equals 8. I always try and draw a rough sketch of what's happening to help me decide what type of equation I'm using. If I look at the point 3, 2 for the focus, 3, 2 is the focus. And the directrix is a y equals equation, but it's y equals 8. y equals is a horizontal line. The parabola then needs to go between them. And the only way we can get between them is to have our parabola come up kind of like this with our vertex in the center. So the focus is at 3, 2. The directrix is at y equals 8. We need to know first, what is our p, that p distance that separates the focus from the vertex and the vertex from the directrix? Well, because we're going horizontally with our p distance, we look at the y values of 8 and 2. The distance from 8 to 2, 8 minus 2 is 6. And that covers, notice the p is there twice. So 6 is equal to 2p. We can see that p value is going to be equal to 3. So the vertex coordinate then, we're still going to the right the same 3. But now we're going to be off by a distance of p which is 3. Well, the focus had a y-coordinate of 2. 3 more would give it a y-coordinate of 5. So the vertex has a coordinates of 3, 5. And we know the p is equal to 3. So we're ready to make our equation. It's a y equals equation because it's a vertical parabola. But it opens downwards, so we know it needs to be negative. Negative 1 over 4 times p, which we found out was 3, times x minus the x-coordinate of 3 squared plus the y-coordinate, which we found out to be 5. A little simplifying in that denominator, we find out that y is equal to negative 1 12 times x minus 3 squared plus 5. And so in this way, we can really use our sketch of the parabola. It doesn't have to be to scale or perfect. But our sketch really helps us build the pieces we need, the vertex and that distance p between the vertex and the focus, or the vertex and the directrix. Let's try one more example. Let's find the equation of the parabola that has a focus of negative 4 comma negative 1 and directrix of x equals negative 8. So this time, if we were to draw a rough sketch, the focus is at negative 4, negative 1. Oops, that's the focus. And the directrix is an x equals equation, which means it's a vertical line. x equals negative 8, which is even further to the left. So that tells us our parabola has to come in through the center. 
we need to find our vertex coordinates. The focus is negative 4, negative 1. The directrix is x equals negative 8. So as we go after our p value, remember p is the distance between the vertex and the focus, or between the vertex and the directrix. So we have two p's of total distance between the vertex and the directrix. The directrix has an x of negative 8. The focus has an x of negative 4. If we subtract those, we find the distance between them is 4 units. So p here must be equal to 2. So if we have a distance of 2 between them, we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2 away from our vertex, I'm sorry, from our focus and the directrix. 2 away from negative 4 is negative 6. And we keep the same y-coordinate of negative 1. And we now know our vertex is at negative 6, negative 1. Well, since our parabola opens to the right, it's an x equals. It's positive because it's opened the correct direction. 1 over 4p, which we found out was 2, times y minus the k, the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 1, so plus 1 squared, plus the x-coordinate, which is negative 6. Cleaning up that denominator, we have x equals 1 8 times y plus 1 squared minus 6. And we now have the equation of our parabola. So the parabola is our second conic section. We've had circles and parabolas. Our third conic section is kind of a variation on the circle, and it is what is called the ellipse. The ellipse is also defined in terms of distance. The ellipse is all the points where the sum of the distance from any point to two foci, which is the plural of focus, is constant. An ellipse is traditionally called the oval shape. And the idea of the ellipse, if I had drawn it perfectly, is we have two foci in the ellipse. And if I were to pick any point on the ellipse and look at the distance to both foci, we'll call them maybe a1 and a2, and then I picked a different point on the ellipse and took its distance to the two foci. We'll call that b1 and b2. And it doesn't matter which points I pick. I could pick a point that's way off on the side. And I end up with c1 and c2 connecting to the two foci. What happens is the sum of the distances, a1 plus a2, is always constant. So from the, B, from the point with the b's, b1 plus b2 is exactly the same distance. Same thing for the c1 plus c2. No matter what point I pick, if I go from that point to the two vertices, the total distance is always constant. That's what makes an ellipse. And we have two equations for ellipses. And it really depends on which direction the ellipse is going. The first is for the horizontal ellipse, where we have x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. 
Or if the ellipse opens vertically, we'll put the y's first, y minus k squared over still a squared plus x minus h squared over b squared equals 1, where the a is always bigger than the b. That's important. The a is always bigger than b. The first denominator is always the biggest. So whichever x or y has the bigger denominator, we have that one come first. And we have this other variable called c, where c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. That's going to be an important relationship for us as we attempt to define some of the properties. First, the major axis. which is the distance across. We'll call it the long distance across. Could be horizontal or vertical, depending on which uh, way the ellipse opens up. But the major axis has a distance of 2a. And the minor axis which is the other direction, depending on its vertical or horizontal. Uh, it's the shorter distance across the middle. That shorter distance is 2b. We also know the distance between the foci, plural of focus, is 2 C. And that's where the C comes in, identifying those focus or foci. And of course, we're getting used to seeing in all of these conic sections that the center is always the point h comma k. So if all this information is true about our ellipse, we should be able to find some equations. Let's find the equation of the ellipse that has endpoints of the major axes at negative 3, comma 5 and negative 3, comma negative 7. That also has the foci at negative 3, comma 1 and negative 3 comma negative 3. Notice the major axis and the foci all have an x-coordinate of negative 3. The endpoints, what moves, is actually the y-coordinate. So that tells me the y-coordinate is where we get the tall and narrow shape, where We've got a center, which we don't know where the center is yet. But we've got two foci, one above and one below. The higher one has a higher y coordinate. So the higher one must be negative 3, 1. The lower one must be negative 3, negative 3. And the endpoints of the major axes means if we draw the long line through the center, the major axis is the longest line possible. So the endpoints must be at negative 3, comma 5 and negative 3, comma negative 7. We need to find a, b, c, and the center, h, comma k. Let's do the center first. That's probably the easiest to do. You can see all of these are in a line on negative 3 for the x coordinate. The y coordinate is going to be in the middle of the foci. So the foci go from 1 to negative 3. The distance between them, if we subtract, 1 minus negative 3 is 4. So the distance between the foci, let's go ahead and label that. The distance between the foci is 4. And remember, that is equal to 
2c. So we're also figuring out here at the same time that 2 equals c when we divide both sides by 2. So if the total distance is 4, half of that is 2. So to get to the center from one of the foci, we'll either add or subtract 2 when we figure out the y-coordinate of the center right in the middle is at negative 1. So we've got our center. We also know that the distance between the endpoints of the major axes is 2a. The distance from 5 to negative 7, if we subtract, is a total distance of 12, which means if we divide by 2, a is equal to 6. We still need to figure out what b is, though. We don't know b from this drawing. But we do know that c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. And c we know is 2. 2 squared is 4 equals a we know is 6. 6 squared is 36 minus b squared. If I add b squared to both sides and subtract 4, I find out that b squared is 32. And that's actually all we need is b squared, because b squared is in the formula. Our formula then becomes, notice this opens vertically, so the y's come first y minus the y-coordinate of the center is negative 1, so plus 1 squared, divided by a squared, 6 squared is 36, plus x minus the x-coordinate, which is negative 3 on the center, squared, divided by b squared, which we just found out was 32, equals 1. And this, then, is the equation of the ellipse that has endpoints of the major axis at negative 3, 5 and negative 3, 7. It also puts the foci at negative 3, 1 and negative 3, 3. Let's do one more ellipse. Let's see if I can leave that on the screen. Let's find the ellipse that has the endpoints of the minor axis. This is the smaller one, at 1, negative 2, and 1, negative 4. Also has foci at negative 2, negative 3, and 3, negative 3. Notice the foci, the y-coordinate is consistent, which means it must open up around the x's. So this is going to be a horizontal ellipse. We know the foci are at negative 2, negative 3, and 3, negative 3. We're going to need to find the center. We're also told the endpoints of the minor axes. The minor axis goes the short distance through the center. The endpoints of the minor axis are at 1, negative 2, and 1, negative 4. Well, the center we know is right in the middle of those. So we obviously have a y-coordinate of 1. And right in the middle of negative 2 and negative 4, we see is negative 3. We also can use our distances to help us conclude a few things. The distance between the foci, we're looking at the x-coordinate here, from negative 2 to negative 3 is 5. And the distance between the foci is 2c. So c equals 5 halves. We also know the distance between the minor axis. The minor axis gives us 2b's. The minor axis goes from negative 2 to negative 4. That's a total distance of 2. So b must be equal to 1. We can then find our c because c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Well, c is 5 halves. That's 25 fourths. 
is equal to a squared, we don't know, minus b squared, which is 1. Add 1 to both sides. That's 4 fourths gives us 29 fourths is equal to a squared. And we're ready to make our equation. Because this one opens up horizontally on the x's, we have the x's come first, x minus the x-coordinate of the center, which is negative 3 plus 3 squared, divided by a squared, which is 29 fourths, plus now the y-coordinate, y minus the y-coordinate is 1 on the center, squared, divided by b squared, which is 1, equals 1. And even though it's a little ugly, this is probably the preferred format of the ellipse because it shows all of that information we want to see. It helps us identify how big the minor axis is, the major axis is, where the center is. So we'll go ahead and leave it in this form. And so that's our third conic section, the ellipse. There is one last conic section. Conic section number four, we'll call it D here. It is called the hyperbola. And the hyperbola is defined really similar to how we define the ellipse. It is all points where, and the only difference is the ellipse was a sum. The hyperbola is the difference. of the distance. From any point to the two foci is constant. And the idea here is a hyperbola is going to look something like this, where there's going to be two vertices. And we take a look at the distance. If I pick a point on one hyperbola, the two distances, the longer one we'll call the first point, the shorter one we'll call the second point. No matter what point I pick on whichever one, the longer one I'll call the first point, the shorter one the second point. No matter which points I pick, when I subtract the a1 minus a2, I'll get the exact same value as if I took the b1 minus the b2 or wherever I want to draw these lines. The hyperbola has that distance constant. Just like with the ellipse, there are two equations that we use for the hyperbolas. The first equation is used if it opens kind of the traditional way off to the left and right. This is where x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And here it doesn't matter which one's bigger, a or b. What's important here is the x is positive and the y squared is negative. Because if we switch that and we have the y minus k squared over a squared minus the x minus h squared over b squared equals 1. Then the hyperbola is open vertically. We also still have this relationship with c. c squared this time is equal to the sum of a squared plus b squared. And with that, we end up with these important properties. The distance between the foci is 2c. And the distance between the vertices 
that's the corners of the hyperbolas, is 2a. We still need to find b to figure out how wide everything's going to be. And then, of course, we still have our center at h comma k. So using this, let's see if we can find some equations. Starting with a hyperbola that has vertices at negative 4 comma 3 and 2 comma 3. And also has foci at negative 7 comma 3 and 5 comma 3. So again, I like to do a rough sketch just so I have an idea of what's happening. With this, I see the vertices, the x coordinate is changing, and the y coordinate is constant. So the x coordinate is going to change left and right. Well, the y coordinate is going to remain constant. So we have vertices at negative 4 comma 3 and 2 comma 3. We also have foci out here at negative 7 comma 3 and 5 comma 3. We need to know where the center is and also find our a, b, and c. Well, the center is going to be right in the middle of the vertices. Our vertices, the x's are changing from negative 4 to 2. And if we subtract, that's a total distance of 6. We know the distance between the vertices is 2a. So that tells us that a is equal to 3. The distance to the center is also equal to 3. So if we back up 3 or add 3, depending on which point we're going from, we'll end up with negative 1 comma 3 as the coordinates of our center point. We now have our h and k. We also have our a. The only other thing we can pull off of the graph is c, which we get from the distance between the foci. The foci go from x of negative 7 to 5. It's a total distance of 12, which we know is 2 c. So c must be equal to 6. Now we can go after the b, because we know c squared is a squared plus b squared. c was 6, squared is 36. a was 3, squared is 9. And subtracting 9 from both sides, b squared is going to be equal to 27. So going to our equation then, the equation is, because it opens sideways, we start with the x, x minus h. h it comes from the center, so 3. I'm sorry, negative 1. So we'll add 1 squared divided by our a squared, 3 squared is 9, minus y minus the y coordinate of the center, which is 3 squared, divided by b squared, which we just found out is 27, equals 1. Let's try one last hyperbola before we step away from them. Let's find the hyperbola that has vertices at 2 comma 3 and 2 comma negative 1. It's also going to have foci at 2 comma 5 and 2 comma negative 3. This time, I see the x's staying consistent, which means the hyperbola is going to go up and down around the y's. 
So the vertices are at 2 comma 3 and 2 comma negative 1. The foci are at 2 comma 5 and 2 comma negative 3. We need to find the center and A, B, and C. Well, first we know that A comes from the distance between the vertices. The x's are the same, so we'll focus on the y's. The distance from 3 to negative 1 is 4, so 4 must equal 2a. Therefore, a equals 2. So the distance from the center to the edge is 2. x-coordinate stays the same. The y-coordinate is 2 off from the vertices. So 3 minus 2 is 1. The center must be at 2 comma 1. The vertices are 2c apart. So from 5 to negative 3 is 8. That's 2c's. So c must equal 4. And then we're ready to go after our b, because we know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a is 2. 2 squared is 4 plus b squared equals c, which is 4. Squared is 16. Subtract 4 from both sides, and b squared equals 12. Now we have all the pieces we need to build our equation. This one opens vertically, so it's going to be a y first. y minus the y coordinate of the center, which is 1 squared over a squared. 2 squared is 4 minus x minus the x-coordinate is 2 squared over b squared, which is 12, equals 1. And we have our hyperbola. So this video was a quick overview of all of the conic sections that we're going to work with in this course. We talked about hyperbolas. We talked about ellipses. We talked about parabolas. And we talked about circles four common conic sections that we're going to talk about further in class. So take a look at the homework assignment. Try a few of these. There's a lot of pieces to keep track of, but they're not too hard as a whole. So take a look at them, and we will see you in class.